Welcome to the Proceedings Podcast. I'm Bill Hamlet, the Editor-in-Chief of Proceedings here at the U.S. Naval Institute. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of July. It is hot as hell here at Annapolis, but we have a special episode of the show for you today. And today's episode is brought to you by Booz Allen. This episode is brought to you by Booz Allen. Accelerate today's missions with tomorrow's technologies. As the leader in providing AI solutions to the federal government, and one of the world's largest cybersecurity providers, Booz Allen advances game-changing capabilities rapidly, ethically, and securely. Learn more at boozallen.com defense. Okay, I'm on the stage of the Jack C. Taylor Conference Center today, and my special guest is the 20th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz. Sergeant Major, great to have you here. Thank you for having me, sir. Yeah, you've been here for a couple of days now in our house hosting your annual Sergeant's Major Conference, which I saw some posters and it said, Everybody Fights. So that's your theme. Um, what are the, how many people have you got here? What are the major topics that you're talking about with the Sergeant's Majors from across the Marine Corps? This is a way for, um, to level set, right? So to level set, okay. To level set. This is a way to communicate directly to the most senior enlisted leaders of the Corps. So it's not just sergeants major. We have master gunnery sergeants here, and we have command master chiefs here. And so they're here uh, to hear the commandant provide guidance. So he was here yesterday? He, uh, he, he came on this morning. This morning, okay. Yes, sir. Great. And uh, uh, they're here to understand in a deeper way uh, where the Marine Corps is headed, where does the Commandant want the Corps to go, and how they, in their formations, can help us get there. Got it. Right. So, everyone fights. Is uh, it's not a it's not a strange concept to us, uh, because no matter where we go, what we're doing, it doesn't matter what rank you are, where you come from, your level of whatever, is when it's time, everyone pulls their weight. Everyone fights. Yeah. Right? Every Marine, a rifleman. That's so right. everyone fights. Got and so it. I yep. brought that here because it doesn't matter to us that we've been in the Corps 30 plus years or 26 plus years. That's, that's very senior leadership here. Yep. I'm not interested. We're not interested in um, getting to a certain level where we don't think like that anymore. And so it doesn't matter. Uh, what level of responsibility you've risen to, uh, you're still going to pull your weight, and you're still going to fight. Everyone here knows that. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that the days are filled with, here are the institutional things that we're going after, and everyone is involved in it. Right? it. Not just you, I don't need you just worried about your silo and your formations. This is a way for everyone to lift their head up and say, okay, Commandant says it this way. Okay, and they understand in a deeper way why we're going that way. Got it. Yes, so you're getting at the why. Yes, sir. That's what I. So, um, so the commandant spoken to them. Uh, what are what are some of the major topics that you know that either he talked about or you as a group are talking about? And you know, what, what are you digging deep on this week? Yeah. First and foremost, we were always going to talk about war fighting. Yep. Right. So uh, we updated them on uh, all things happening uh, in the way of the future of the Corps. The things that we're investing in, investing in uh, on, the platforms and things that are coming, uh, what's the threat doing, what do they think they can do. Um, and so that's first and foremost. Uh, not second, but tied just the same as people. Yep. And so if anyone is to take care of people, it's this group. If anyone is to push standards and proficiency and conduct, it's this group. And so uh, we spoke a lot about recruiting, retention. We spoke a lot about culture. We spent most of our, our day today talking about our culture. Uh, we think that uh, we don't think, we know we have the best culture of all the services. We don't, we don't, we don't make things complicated. Uh, it's very simple. It's about war fighting and people. It is the person that is the weapon system, 
right? It's not the weapon system. We are the weapon system. And so uh, how do we make sure that we deliver on the promise of who we say we are? Mm -hmm. And what, what does that look like inside our formations? Because when we continually seek, sir, uh, perfection or a level of professionalism in our force, a war fighting culture, then the rest of it takes care of itself, meaning that the reputation of the Marine Corps precedes it, and therefore we can recruit, we can retain, that our leadership, that the way that we handle uh, mission, and mission intent type orders will always, will always be uh, that you can count on the United States Marine Formation to get it done. If there's two left, you know, this week I heard this. What's winning look like? Winning looks like a United States Marine standing in a defensive position after being taken, standing with a flag, right? So that's what, that's everything that we look at, we try to attack, is look at, it's looked at from that lens, right? So uh, I already forgot the question that you asked me, but uh, I <laughs> just wanted major to- Major themes for your, for your conference here. It's, if, if we continue to go after who we say we are, then, then people will come. This is still a place that it's hard and hard is authorized. Yep. And the decision to become a United States Marine, it's irrational. It's irrational. Irrational. Um, and so there's no, there's no advertisement agency, there's no one that can tell me why a person chooses to be a Marine. It's just an irrational decision. You want to be forward. You want to be inside the weapon engagement zone. You want this long of a boot camp. You want discipline. You want structure. You want to be considered one of the best war fighting organizations that ever lived. You're not looking so much for benefits and money. Like This is still a place where the American youth wants to test themselves in, but we have to be that so they can continue to come. And they're coming, we're gonna make retention, we're gonna make accessions, just like we did last year, we will make it again this year ahead of schedule. We're so far ahead of schedule that we are already three quarters of the way done with next year's mission. You're three quarters of the way ahead oh. with 2025 yes, recruiting. Sir. Yes, sir. That's impressive. Yes, sir. That's an impressive statistic. So I was, I was going to lead into the, that discussion by just saying what a lot of our listeners and readers know, which is that uh, the, the military writ large, the other services, are having a hard time, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, having a hard time meeting their recruiting goals and their retention goals. Uh, but the Marine Corps consistently the last couple of years has met the goals for both, right? Yes, sir. Um, and, and it sounds like you're not just meeting it for 2024, but you're ahead of the game already for next year. Well, we understand, sir, is that uh, uh, accessions, the, the civilian to a Marine, uh, there's the conversations about a propensity to serve, right, that, that continues to decline in this country. Mm -hmm. Well, I have the secret weapon, which is a Marine Corps recruiter. I have our culture. I have our history, we have the brand, and I have a Marine recruiter who represents the very best of us. And that's why a professional Marine out in the civilian sector speaking about their own experiences about being a Marine and why it changed their life, right? That's what attracts young they men succeed. and women, yeah. right? That that's why we succeeds. win. And we give you the propensity to serve. We're not waiting for you to get it. Got it. Right? Um, and so when I say that we're three quarters done, I'm talking about the Marines who have done their first enlistment and have decided I want to stay again for a second. So that's what I'm talking about, okay. the, the, the first term of sessions that uh, are making the jump to stay. So even though you know, we may not have the nicest buildings or uh, the best mess halls or whatever we're trying to improve today. Reenlistment bonuses. Reenlistment yeah. bonuses, yeah. on and on, they still stay, right? Because they found their place, right? They found something 
when I when I say uh, irrational decision is is uh, it's like really like I am I'm doing all of these hard things and the deal is from the institution that we're gonna push you we're gonna deliver you these standards for you to meet and then in return then you're gonna elevate the Marine Corps you're gonna push the Marine Corps forward right so it's this two-way thing yeah. so when we empower them to say we need your ideas don't care where you come from what you look like you who handle the most complicated video game systems or you're the best athlete in your school does not matter to us you come here with the thoughts and ideas on how to improve us we're going to listen so when they become connected to that yep. it's like yeah, I want to be part of that. And so I don't just say that from just because I love the Marine Corps. I'm saying it because that's what the numbers say. Got it. Right? Got that it. the data backs it up. Well, that, that, that jives with what um, the Commandant said, General Smith said on the show last year. I interviewed him at Modern Day Marine. And one of the things he, he talked about was about aging the force a bit, right? Mm -hmm. That the Marine Corps traditionally, if you went back 20, 30 years ago, had an awful lot of, I mean, most Marines were first-termers, they were 19-year-old, 20-year-olds, and they would do their one year, one, one tour in the Marine Corps, one term, and then they would get out. And that was sort of expected because you had, you wanted a young Marine Corps. That was the way the force structure was built. And he's saying, he said to me last year, now we want, we want second and third-termers. We want more sergeants. Mm -hmm. We want more staff sergeants. Um, how does that change when Marines expect to lead, how does it change the training that you have to do for them? How does it change, you know, sort of the, when you're a 19 year old, 18 year old PFC, your expectations of life are a little bit different than when you're a 24, 25 year old, and now you've got a few years under you, you're in your second enlistment, your second term, yeah. right? So that's, that changes the force, it changes the expectations, it also changes how you have to train them and, and build them into something a little bit different, right? You do, sir, um, and it's more expensive. Sure. Right? Right. So right. You you're, wanna, you're paying them a lot more. You're paying a, a lot more. Um, and I say that not because they get paid what they're worth. Right. Not, not that they have to, that <laughs> yeah. they're getting paid a lot. Right? Yeah. Right. But they're getting paid a lot more than E2s. Yes, right? sir. When and you're an E5, E6, right? Your, your pay is more. Different conversation. Right. Um, and so, and so that's, we, we want to age the force, but not age the force. We want to, this, they're so talented, right? They just want more. They want to take on more, and you better keep them engaged. Otherwise, they're going to quickly become bored, and they're going to vote with their feet. And so do you only have to be a cook? Do you only have to be a warehouse person? there's so much more to you that you can give the Marine Corps. Mm. So how much more expertise can we give you so you can operate alone and unafraid in the dispersed environment, wherever it is that we need to exist in order to enable the joint force, the fight. And so that requires a deep look at the way that we make them, develop them. And so we've moved the way we do the how we make a grunt and O3XX and what things do we want them to learn and how deep of knowledge do we want them to have. Weapon systems, critical thinking, are they moving with, the, with, with their future squad leader in the training pipeline? Are they going to stay together through the formations? So we're having to, to really look at these Marines can do so much more and they want to do mm -hmm. so much more. Um, because the future fight, you're going to need to do a lot more, yeah. right? And so the commandant has asked, you know, his deputy commandants to take a look at the policies, take a look at how we make Marines, and break it. <laughs> break it. Okay. <laughs> and shake it up. If it was, if it worked, because the, the Marine Corps was at a different place ten years ago, and it doesn't apply, change it. Here's the authorities. Go crazy. Maybe we do need to retain Marines a little longer in Camp Pendleton. Maybe we do need to retain them a little longer in Lejeune. Do we have to move you every three years? We're just looking at 
how to develop our talent in a lot a smarter way. So they have a little more say in their career, right? Yep. And uh, if they have a little more predictability in their career, um, go to Guam, do a hard thing, go to Okinawa, go do something, to go drill instructor, go recruiting, don't sell your house, don't do this, because you're gonna come back here. Mm, right? okay. A little more predictability for the family. Family stability. Things yep. that we never used to think of before. Yeah. Because we're just going to, here comes the next crop. Right. Here comes the next crop. But now we're saying, no, we need to make you better. We need to make you, and we can make you more lethal. The, the beauty of it is that we don't know what we can do. Meaning, uh, retention this year is record breaking. So we're, we're still wow. going. Yeah. Right. So did we set the number too low? Right. Hmm. And so how much more can we? And that's retain? without paying bonuses. Right. Wow. So we yeah. will pay bonuses for certain skill sets. Sure. Sure. But uh, that's not uh, that's not the brand. Got it. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Something you're working on um, and it will come out. It'll new, be a new Marine Corps training publication called mm -hmm. Sustaining the Transformation coming out later this summer. It tells the story of two Marines checking into their first commands, mm -hmm. right? And one Marine checks in and he gets the support, the onboarding process goes well, a sponsor, et cetera, right? And that sets him up for success or her up for success. Mm -hmm. The second Marine, you know, checks into a new command and the onboarding process does not go well. So take it from there. Yes, sir. And so that was the concept from General Krulak. Uh, he tells, he put this beautiful publication into our hands, saying, who do you want to be? L command team, leadership team, leaders. What do you want to deliver to the Marines? You made a promise to the Marine and their family that you were going to return them a better citizen. Right? right. And so here's an example of how he can go really, really well and deliver on that promise. And here's an example of how he can go horribly wrong. So now you fast forward, gosh, 20 plus years. And he was tweaked a little bit by um, uh, a future commandant, and his name escapes me now. But now uh, General Smith has it. And this commandant says, there's a responsibility of the institution to sustain your transformation from civilian to Marine. But there's also, you have a responsibility to sustain your own transformation. And so this is an evolution of that story. So that Lance Corporal, who got a great taste of the Marine Corps, um, life is still happening to, to them, right? Yep. So as life is moving on and is pu putting challenges in front of that Marine, uh, maybe they're not so motivated for a few months or a year, or maybe they arrive to a duty station and it's not as, hmm challenging us the last one was yeah and so things are changing in your life and you're trying to figure out who you are right and so this publication is meant to tell the non-commissioned officer this is the thing some of the things that you can do to sustain that lance corporal's transformation and then to the staff and co staff and co this is some of the things that you can do to sustain the nco's transformation and we go all the way to officers got it to feel great officers uh. giving them uh thoughts and ideas of this is how you could do it. But then turning, turning it around on them and saying, but these are some of the things that you can do for yourself to sustain the transformation within yourself. So while life gets complicated, while deployments keep happening, yep. uh, leadership changes, you pick up rank, gets a little more complicated, more responsibility. All things that make you different as a Marine, they're still in your soul. How do I keep that cup filled, mm. right? Yeah. So uh, putting that on paper is very hard. I No doubt. Because right. it's different for everybody. Right, right. There's a bit of leadership there. There's about a human psychology, yeah. you know, moral development, yeah. uh, all those things. That's right. right. And yeah. the concept of work-life balance, right. really, not really a thing, yep. you know, in this service. Yeah. Uh, for us, I think it's more of, input output what fills your soul right how you're replenishing all the output that you're giving to your to your humans inside your organization sure what 
fills your cup. Whatever that is, find it, right? Because you're going to spend most of your career trying to create an environment where all that the Marine Corps promised exist. So people mm -hmm. stay 30 years, yep. people stay 20 years, because someone had you, made you feel that. Family, you knew everything about each other, you knew birthdays, you loved each other without condition. It was perfect. Yep. Might have been three months, might have been six months, but you felt it. And then you spend the rest of your career trying to create that for yourself again, yep. find and, it again. And for others. And then for others. Right. Right? Yeah. And so that's, that's what we mean about sustaining the transformation. Got it. I like it. Uh, it occurred to me as I was thinking about this conversation yesterday, the day before, it's 2024. Four years ago, we were in the middle of COVID, the pandemic, the outbreak, you know, trying to figure out how do we get through this collectively as the U.S. military as a society, et cetera. And you had, um, so now, four years later, the first term Marines who are, who are finishing their first term as Marines and perhaps getting out or deciding to re-enlist, um, you know, they came in at a tumultuous time in the service, right? And the kids that are coming in today that are going through boot camp now, they went through high school at that time and, and their high school education their perhaps their maturation to adulthood was um, was affected, to say the least, right, by that event. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what you're hearing, what you see of in, in young Marines now who are perhaps finishing up their first term, who came in when all of that, you know, uh, change was happening, all of that chaos was kind of happening, and also what you're seeing from kids going through boot camp now, mm -hmm. uh, the very youngest Marines um, who went through high school through that, that chaos, right? Do you have to change the way, one, you communicate, two, you lead them, three, you motivate them? You know, how has that impacted, you know, sort of how, how senior Marines talk to very junior Marines now versus maybe what it was like five to 10 years ago. Yes, sir, that's good. I, uh, uh, I think it's important to, st I'll state the obvious, that the people joining, the young generation joining the Marine Corps today are not necessarily joining because they saw towers fall. They're not. Right, They're right. They're not here. They weren't born. They weren't born. On 9-11. Right? Correct. And so, what is it that attracted them? What, what is the compelling thing? And is it a, why, why the Marine Corps, right? And so I think that uh, the attraction to us is that we didn't lower a single standard. We didn't make excuses that, yeah, you were home uh, because things were complicated in the world and things were, were hard. Um, we didn't get nicer because you, you know, um, you had a hard time or you didn't finish, you didn't do four years of attending a high school, for example. You only did two or whatever it was. Because we didn't adjust the standards, we didn't lower the standards, they were, they were able, like every generation before them, to elevate themselves to meet the standard. And then they figured, then they found out that the standards for the Marine Corps um, are the very basics, mm. right? <laughs> that we are slightly interested after you make it through boot camp about you continuing to make that minimum standard because that's not how we work. Yeah. We're looking to elevate the standard and we're looking for you to always shoot for the highest of standards. What the leaders of today understand very well for us is that they don't elevate the standard by, under, by pushing the highest standards. They know inside their organization who holds the lowest. And by raising the lowest, you start elevating everyone. And so um, I think we're fine. There's no, you can go to 29 Palms right now. Yep. And there's 19 year olds and 20 year olds preparing for a company attack or a platoon attack at whatever range at 116 degree temperature. They got their cami paint on, they make, make sure their ammo and their gear set, 
like they've always done. Right? We just, what we had to adjust and we were adjusting quickly is um, how do we give them more? Because mm. they can do more. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, the answer is not lowering standards. Okay. The answer is. It's, yeah, and I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't um, hinting at, at lowering standards. And I know yeah. some of the other services have perhaps changed their physical fitness standards or done some other things to sort of modify to get, to get more recruits in, right? Yeah. Um, that wasn't really I was, where I was going. It was more about, you know, is the way you motivate a 20-year-old mm. Marine today, yeah. is it different than you perhaps motivated or somebody motivated you yeah. 25, 30 years ago? Yeah, that's, that's good. I, um, I have no data to back this up. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that... Speculation from the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps yeah. here. I like it. But I, but I, especially from the last couple of days, the generation today is looking for you to be legitimate in your rank. That you're authentic. Authentic. And Got transparent it. leader. Yep. That is not pretending, but deeply uh, cares about being as authentic as possible. You can, I still have hair and smile, but that doesn't mean that um, that I don't have those standards of the Marine Corps deep in me, right? And so maybe there's a, a, a give and take here. The, I'm looking for the Marine not to say, I'm looking for you to inspire me, yep. but only inspire me between nine and 11, right? No, like this is an institution that requires constant, right? Um, constant pursuit of proficiency and understanding what shoulders of giants you stand on and where you must go, right? That working to the standards of the last generation is likely going to get your butt kicked in the next fight. Mm. So, um, do you talk to him differently? I think they're a lot smarter, and they, and we are getting so much better at understanding the concept of emotional intelligence. That the person who used to just yell, just to yell, yeah, right, the, who hid behind their rank because there wasn't much depth there, or that's the way that they were treated. That for this generation, you're out. Like, you will not get through. Right. Yeah. So who's in, who is inside your formations and can you look at them, not like a piece of furniture, but as human beings? Because they want to be seen. They want to matter. That old model recipient that comes out right. That comes out of his mouth. Mm. So they want to matter and they want to contribute. So we have to give them that opportunity and we have to empower them. Right. Yeah. And we've had to adjust because did you talk to your corporal? Did you talk to your and up and down the chain of command. Yep. We had to be willing to listen, maybe a little broader, broader now. Uh, who's got the answer? Okay, let's go that way. Fail quickly, because we're giving them um, some of the you know, futuristic toys, uh, platforms and things, and we're giving them, put them in their hands and say, this is how we think you should use this, and they're returning that gear saying, Okay, that's a good idea, but this is how it should be used, right? Yeah. Because they're the ones doing it. Right. 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 And this, I mean, my goodness, the stuff that they come back with, PhDs. I didn't think of that, but the Lance Corporal thought of that, mm. right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, to that point, uh, so you've had your senior enlisted leaders from across the Marine Corps uh, and some Navy. You said uh, in here this week. Um, you're all thinking about things from the threat to the, the human factors, right? So are you talking about things like lessons from what we're seeing in Ukraine, Russia, that, that battlefield, right, where small unmanned systems are making a big difference? The character, not the nature, but the character of war seems to be changing very rapidly, right? or about you know, EABO and Force Design 2030 and how the Marine Corps is going to have to fight differently three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Um, what do you hear from 
your fellow sergeants major? Mm -hmm. um, what are they excited about and what are they perhaps concerned about? Yes, sir. And uh, we were talking about that today. Uh, With the Commandant. Uh, and our SEAC. And uh, here's what came out of it. That the character of war, how we do war, yeah. uh, is changing. And it's speeding up really, really fast. And you can look at an open source. You can go to Instagram right now. And you can see uh, what's happening, how complicated things are. But are they really complicated? If you look at enough things, you will see that there's still a Russian soldier in a trench moving through a trench line towards a Ukrainian one. Right. New, new tools, but perhaps an old situation, right? That's right. Yeah, interesting. And so that just tells us that this is an organization about people and making sure that if a United States Marine is on that trench, there's a bayonet in somebody's heart and he won't be on ours. And so we're doing and we're moving like we've always done. How do I make that Marine's soul uh, harden enough Right, in control enough and give him all the capabilities that he needs or they need to make sure that they just stick it to whoever that is, step over their body, and move on to the next. Because the nature of war, it's never going to change. Right? So right. that's where we are. Right. right. We're doing we're exactly where we need to be. It's a battle of human wills to yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I like that uh, that response. Um, we're running uh, short of time here. Um, one more point I wanted to bring up, and this is something that has been a, a key theme for you, um, and it's the importance of staying connected with fellow Marines, uh, particularly as we, you know, as we age out and we either choose to leave the service or retire at some point, 20, 30 years on, right? But we, we go on and we do different things. It's easy to be connected with our fellow shipmates and Marines when we see them every day, yes, sir. right? But when we leave the service, um, there's an, and we, we see this in the, the veteran suicide rate, for example, right? I think it's important to stay connected with your brothers and sisters in arms. So what kinds of things are you doing and perhaps other senior Marines doing to help Marines as they, as they transition out to stay connected? Yes, sir. Um, I feel a sense of responsibility to reach out. I mean, there's thousands of veteran service organizations all with the mission to do to get after their own individual things that they feel that they want to help it yeah most of them yes they're aligned to uh, mental health uh, but still post 9 11 generations right the marines who are just entering recruit training today right they must be able to connect in their own way what what is going to work for them so I love the American Legion. I love the BFW, long-standing organizations that have helped us evolve and helped us uh, fight for the benefits of a veteran, right? And they've always been there for us. Yep. Um, but today, there exist new organizations that are looking to reach out to Marines and service members in a very different way. Because just because you leave service doesn't mean service left your soul. Right. Right. It's always going to be there. Yeah. Right. And it's my theory. It's my my I guess my my mission to tell those service members, our Marines, that if you did four or 30, that there is still something burning inside of you that wants to serve, that you raised your right hand to serve. And that didn't stop when you exited. Right. And maybe you stay connected through commenting on things or or in your own way, right? I just think there's a circle of service that can't be broken. And that uh, when we return young people back to the civilian world, that they return back to the civilian world um, with goals and uh, people on the other side waiting to catch them, right? Mm -hmm. So you have aspirations to be a governor or a mayor or a CEO or CIA agent, whatever it is, there's someone on the other side 
that's mentoring you mm -hmm. while you're in uniform, and yeah. then they catch you on the other side, mm -hmm. right? That you look at that rear view mirror, you see that gate, you're leaving that gate for the last time, yep. and that question starts happening in your head, right? They're like, who am I now? If I'm not Sergeant Jones, right. like, who am I? And then 10 years, maybe a year will pass by. And you're like, man, I sure miss being rained on in the dirt somewhere. <laughs> I sure miss blah, 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 right? And you see certain things yeah. like, where am I going to find that here? Yeah. Right? And I just want to tell them that just look, pick up your head. That they're everywhere, right? And today I had, uh, or yesterday I had, uh, up and coming patrol base Abate. They've been alive for like four years. Patrol base Abate. Abate, okay. right? And, and that is a, a new veteran service organization? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is uh, the idea that you return to base. It's named after Sergeant Abate. Okay. Um, and you return to base and where you will be met by others who have shared experiences. Mm. And they don't care that you were in combat or not in combat. They don't care what MOS you were. Did you serve? Did you raise your right hand? You are welcome. And then you have organizations like I had uh, the Travis Manning Foundation. Mm. I'm at the Naval Academy. Yeah. Everyone knows about Travis Manning. Right. 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 And they've been around for 17 years. And the work that they do with character development and teaching the youth about why that flag means something and why people come to the Naval Academy. Right. And so they've been doing this for a long time. And then you have the American Legion, which I had. I had a Marine Corps League representative here Got it. who are on the ground every day taking care of veterans. You don't have to be alone, right? And if you stop serving, um, I believe that there's something missing, right? And it's okay to give into it again and light that fire again. Yeah. And in your own way, however you can, stay connected to us because if you don't if you don't stay connected to us um, I believe that um, the American people will start understanding why you did what you did why did you join why did you go and serve three combat tours why did you do that you need to be able to tell that story to the next generation so they also show up just yeah. like you did. Yeah, your sea stories are important, right? They're so yeah. important. And then sometimes, like the most basic of things, uh, an active duty Marine wearing a uniform can say, do this, and the young Marine says, hmm, the old man is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but if a veteran says it, the same rank as that young Marine exited as a corporal, but if they say it, they're like, ah, that's why discipline matters. Let me tell you why that first sergeant is telling you to do things. I didn't get it then. I get it now, 10 years removed from the rank of corporal. Yep. Discipline matters. This is why you don't do this in the field. This is why. And so there's this connectiveness that happens, and this circle continues of service. Right? Or you can sit by and watch the television tell you what's happening and have no more say. I'm not letting you do that. I need you to get involved. That's a great point. Well, we are sadly out of time because I've really enjoyed this conversation. My guest has been the 20th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Carlos Ruiz. Uh, Sergeant Major, it's been great to have you here today. Thank thanks for hosting your, your conference here at our facility, and, uh, and thanks for taking the time at the end of a very busy, long day uh, to talk to me and to talk to our viewers and listeners. This has been great. I and, appreciate uh, the hospitality, sir. I appreciate it. And we're trying to be so nice so we get invited back. <laughs> we won't break anything. We so. look forward to having you back. <laughs> All right, sir. Back. Um, today's episode has been brought to you by Booz Allen and Hamilton. This episode is brought to you by Booz Allen. Accelerate today's missions with tomorrow's technologies. As the leader in providing AI solutions to the federal government and one of the world's largest cybersecurity providers, Booz Allen advances game-changing capabilities rapidly, ethically, and securely. Learn more at boozallen.com slash defense. Okay, that wraps up another episode of the Proceedings Podcast. Until next week, remember, victory begins at the Naval Institute. Mm -hmm.